Hey, so thank you so much for being here today. Jesus has a word for us, as he always does. It's vital that we know what Jesus is thinking, and he's sharing that with us today. And he wants you to know that the problems in your life are created by Satan. He has created the problems that you're facing today, and he did that by coming into your thinking, right? Corinthians says that he comes into our thinking, that we have to measure every thought that comes and be sure it's not, it, it's not being exalted against the true knowledge of God. And if you weren't brought up on the Word of God, if you don't have understanding, he, he's just going to take over. And he does that in your thinking. He gets you to think the problems, and then you think those problems into existence without even knowing that. And so Jesus wants you to know that he has come, that you may have life, have it to the full until it overflows, and the enemy has come to still kill and destroy. And he does that as he enters into your thinking. He roams around like a roaring lion, looking for someone that he can devour, someone that doesn't know, someone that he can trick, someone that he can steal from. And so he comes, he, he'd rather you not believe in him. He, he'd rather you not know because then it's so much easier to mess up your life, to ruin the plan that God has for you. Jeremiah 29, 11, God has a plan for you. He knows the plans he has for you. They're good plans. And when you seek him, you're going to know that plan. We talked about that yesterday. The enemy also has a plan to, to just mess that up, to mess up your life, to bring, to bring problem after problem into your life so that you don't do the, the plan that God has. So we have to choose sides. Are we going to choose God? Are we going to choose the enemy? If you're going to choose God, then you got to get to know the word. You have to have this revelation knowledge. You have to live by his principles. And you have to know you have an enemy and he is against you. And he has been working from the beginning to create these problems in your thinking to make them to come to pass. And, and using people that don't even know they're being used to create these problems in your head. So what, whatever you're dealing with today, whether it be sickness, disease, poverty, um, just just issues in your life that um, affect your ability to do things because of things that were said to you and and the enemy you know he's he's just repeating those lies in your head like for instance you know you're not good enough you can't do this you're always going to be broke um, you just don't have the talent that you need. And just all these lies that, that he's creating in your head creates, it, it creates a stronghold in your mind. And that's who you turn out to be. And if you're not brought up in this truth, you don't know it. You don't know you're, you're in a war. You don't know that he's controlling you now and your eternal life. All the problems that you have um, with your kids and and all the things that are going on in your life, all these little things that cause chaos is him. He has planted these things in your mind since you were little. And he, he was planning for that to grow on the inside of you so big that when you got older, it would stop you, whatever it is, whatever it is. And so the Bible says, as a man thinks, so is he. And so what he got you to think created that problem in your life. But you can reverse that problem by having the revelation knowledge of knowing this, knowing that he's roaming around, looking for someone he can mess up their life, who he can steal their eternity from. He's working really hard. He's working really hard to steal from us. And actually, it, it's, it's super easy if you don't know that he's working a plan out for your bad, not for your good, the opposite of what God is doing. He's working to take from you 
anything he can. And sometimes, you know, it, it doesn't even look like he's doing anything because he, he's got you so conditioned to thinking, you know, a certain way. Like, you know, just this is just how the world operates and we're all going down this wide path, but we don't even know it because we don't know God because we haven't we don't know the word of God. We don't know we have an enemy. And so if you're in that place, you're not even going to even have a hint of knowing what he's stealing from you. Whatever buttons he can push in your life, he does. And he started creating those buttons when you were younger. And so, and if, if you do know the word, he still, he's still going to try to come against you. So it's our part to do the word, to understand his motive and to take authority over him and stop letting him create those problems. And I started to say, Jesus said that whatever problem you have in your mouth, in your life, that you can change it, that you can speak to it and change it. When, when you know the word of God, you know you have authority. You, have, you know you have authority over the enemy and you can stop him. See, he doesn't want you to know that you have authority. He doesn't want you to know that you can speak to the problems. And so if the problems are already existing in your life, it's okay. You can stop them. Get to know the word of God. Meditate on it. Get it in your heart. Learn how to live in the kingdom of God. It's really a, a, a thing that you got to do now. It's vital because Jesus is coming. You got to be ready. You can't be living in the kingdom of darkness and move into the kingdom of light at the last minute. You got to do it now. And Jesus is reaching out to you through me. He's saying, I'm coming. Get ready and know that your problems aren't from me. They're from the enemy. He's creating those problems in your mind, in your family. He's, doing, he's dividing. He's just causing all kinds of chaos because you're not taking captive your thought because you don't know to do it. He wants to secretively work in your life. And that's why he says things like, you don't need to look at the word. And that's why you look at other people and take other people's opinions of the word of God and you're, you're copying them. But the word of God is your lifeline. It's how you're going to know that you have an enemy. The word of God is your instruction for eternal life, for the good life here. So he's trying to keep it from you. He tries to tell you that one of his lies that people believe is that, um, God, God's trying to take things away from you. God gave you that sickness and that disease. And you're going to believe all that stuff. You're, you're going to believe it if you don't know the truth, if you don't know the word of God. And that's how he works. And so he, he's working behind the scenes, you know, where you don't even recognize if you don't know the word, what he's doing. He's telling you all these lies and you're believing them. And he's got you focused on all these lies, all these problems that are in your life. He's got you focused on that so you're not focused on getting ready. Jesus is coming. you got to be ready. And so you need to know the Word of God. You need to know the problems in your life were created by the enemy. And how to get rid of the problems is to know the Word of God and do the Word of God. God isn't going to do it for you. He's giving you the directions. He's giving you the authority over the enemy. So you take that, that authority. So you take that authority over him that Jesus gave you and you stop him. And a lot, and, and it starts with revelation knowledge. It starts with wisdom. The word says faith comes by hearing the word of God. When you hear the word of God, you get faith, you get revelation knowledge, you know what to do. You can go here and there and everywhere about your problems. But if you go to the Word of God, it covers every problem you have, and you know the root of that problem is the enemy working in your mind. 
as a man thinks, so is he. Jesus said, what you say will happen. And so he tries to get in there and, and make you think his thoughts. And then you say them and then you create them. He created them. You created them by listening to him. You allowed him entrance. And so it's vital that you know that your eternal life depends upon what you know and what you do with what you know. That you don't. He's your problem. Right now, if, if you've never asked Jesus to come live on the inside of you and this is all new to you, that's all you got to do is say, Jesus, come live on the inside of me. He said he's knocking on the door of your heart. And if you heed his voice, he'll come and live on the inside of you. He'll reveal the word to you. You'll have understanding. Jesus said, you can't see in the kingdom unless you receive him, unless you're born again, unless you're born of the Spirit. So you have to receive him, and then you're going to know that the enemy is real, and you're going to know his plots against you. Jesus is going to tell you. He's going to tell you this problem that you've had all your life is because he created that in your mind, and you're acting on it. You're feeding it. You're saying you have it, and the word says to say you don't. And it doesn't, it, it's foolishness to a man that can't see into the kingdom. And so the first thing you got to do is be born again. And then gather all those problems up that you have and start taking authority over them, wipe them out, get rid of them. He created those problems, not God. Jesus came that you may have life, have it to the full until it overflows. I want to read to you in the Passion Translation what it says. A thief who is the enemy has only one thing in mind. He wants to still slaughter and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance more than you expect. Life to its fullness and until you overflow. So if you're thinking that way, he, he wants to give you more than you even expect. Life to the full until it overflows. If you have that mindset instead of God came to take from you, uh, I guess I got to bear this because um, God's not doing anything about it. But that's not what the Word says. By His stripes you were healed. He bore your sickness, your disease, your sorrow, your pain. You don't have to be sick. But the enemy is trying to think you do have to be sick, that God did this to you, and this is your, your cross to bear. And that's not even biblical. But people say it because the enemy planted rotten seeds in their mind, poison, to get you to believe a lie. He's planting um, lies in people's heads today so much that they can't even hear God anymore. Even if you did, you can't hear him anymore because you're meditating on lie instead of the truth. And Satan's just having a heyday. He's so excited that you believe him and you don't believe God. He's excited if you don't believe in him because, then, as I said, he, he has an easier time convincing you of his lie. If you know the truth, that truth is going to set you free. If you know the truth, he can't come against you. He can't sabotage that plan that God has for you. I have come that you may have life, have it to the full, until it overflows. I hurt so bad, I didn't want you to hurt, so I hurt for you. By my stripes, you're healed. Given will be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. But Satan's got people thinking, hang on to what you have. Because if you give, you're going to have more, and I don't want you to have more. So I'm going to convince you, you got to hang on to what you have. Don't give it away. You're going to need it someday. And so you pack your house full of stuff and... That's the opposite of the kingdom of God's principles. That's the opposite of what God said to do. And that's why you're broke. Given will be given unto you. Pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Seek my way of doing and being right, and what you need will be added to you. I have a plan for you. It's a good plan. He created you to do something wonderful. What did Adam do? He named all the animals. What a cool job. God has something for you to do, but Satan's trying to make you think that you just got to work, you got to survive, you know, 
life is just so hard because you hate your job and God has something wonderful for you to do. And so all these lies he's planted in your head all these years created who you are and what you do and why you're miserable or why you think, um, why you think you're happy, but you're not. And you keep having to get all this stuff to be happy. And it works for a little while, right? And then, okay, I need a new car. Oh, I need a dog. Oh, I need this. Oh, I need that. And from thing to thing to thing to thing. And that's not, not what you need. You need Jesus. You need to know the plan that you were created to do, to be involved in the kingdom of God, to prepare the way for him, to be ready on that day when Jesus comes. And that's why Satan keeps um, making problem after problem come your way so that you won't do it. So that on that day, Jesus has to say, I didn't know you. Not everyone who calls me Lord will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but those who do the will of my Father. And many are going to say, but Lord, I did this, I did that. I worked hard. I did what you said to do. You thought you did, but who were you listening to? Was it God or was it the enemy? Did you take captive your thoughts? Did you make sure what you were thinking didn't exalt itself above the true knowledge of God? 2 Corinthians 10, 3 through 5. If you didn't, then you were thinking his thoughts. You got to weigh it out. You got to weigh it out. Did God say that? Does this agree with the word? Or is this a lie I'm believing? Because that lie will manifest into a problem, right? Of course it will. When you do something against um, the ways of God, then it's going to turn into a problem because it's sin. And Jesus gave up his life for you. He took those stripes for you. He got on the cross for you so you don't have to sin anymore. And you don't want to sin anymore. Once you get a taste of not sinning, because as soon as you sin, the enemy comes and condemns you for it. He gets you to sin, and then he condemns you for it. So wherever you're at in your walk, God wants you to, to have this wisdom. He wants you to grow up in his knowledge and control the enemy rather than him control you. Get rid of those problems. Speak to the mountain. Jesus said, Whatever you say, if you believe what you say, it'll happen. Satan created the problems. God wants to help you get rid of them. He wants to teach you, give you the instruction of how to do it. And it, it's, it's easy to speak to the mountain and believe what you say, and it'll happen. Speak to the problem, believe what you say, and it will happen. That's his promise. But you got to forgive. Lots of people think they don't have to forgive. Or they have a misconception of what forgiveness is. We need God. We need his wisdom. We need his revelation knowledge. If you never asked him to come live on the inside of you, and you're willing to heed his voice, I want to pray with you right now. Jesus, we want to heed your voice. We want to learn your way. We want to understand. We're asking you to come and live on the inside of us. You said you're knocking at the door of our heart, and we want to, we want to just let you in. We want to live with you forever. We want to get rid of these problems. And we thank you that you came to make it possible for us to understand and take authority. And so we receive you. We welcome you. We love you and praise you. Give you all the glory. Okay, so Jesus, thank you so much. Thank you so much. He's so good. If you said that prayer for the first time, know the word. He's this word, John 1, 1. And when you know the word, then you start acting on it. And then you're going to just, like, be so excited. The things that you're learning and how you can be a conqueror. And by the way, he said only the overcomers, their name won't be blotted out of the book of life. You can say that prayer and then not overcome. And your name will be blotted out of the book of life. The way you overcome is you follow Jesus. Do what he said. 
take authority over the enemy. Don't let him take authority over you. Learn the word. Learn the principles. Keep hearing. Faith comes by hearing. Revelation knowledge comes by hearing. Thanks so much for listening today. God bless you.